Hey everyone, Sarah Picaro. Um, I hope you like the title of this video <laughs> because it's true. Uh, why you're messed up today? And I imagine you feel like you're messed up if you feel like you constantly are uh, overwhelmed, stressed, tired, frustrated. You can't figure it out. You're either stuck in a toxic relationship, have been in one, or find yourself always dating or attracting people like that and you just feel like man I am so messed up what is it like why I don't want to feel this way anymore I don't want to be this way anymore it feels like it's always been this way well it links back to past experiences past events and obviously if you're an adult human your past was your childhood so we're going to take a look at why you feel like that today well maybe it's because something as simple as you were left alone a lot you were left alone, like your parents worked all the time, or maybe you moved all the time and you had to go to schools that, you know, you had to be whoever you needed to be in order to fit in, to belong, to make new friends. I had a recent client whose uh, dad was in the Air Force and they moved all the time. And she said, I, I did really well in school. I got good grades and it wasn't any of that. It was just, I, I don't get it, right? And she was left alone all the time because mom was busy. Mom had five kids. And so she never really got to connect or engage with mom. Although she had a really good, nice mom, loving, caring, kind. She just didn't get a lot of engagement with her. And then, you know, dad was never home because he was working all the time. So if you were left alone all the time or if being in a room felt a lot safer than being out or being with friends, but that's really what you desired and wanted more than anything. So if you were left alone all the time, if you were humiliated, bullying is huge. I was massively bullied as a child. I actually just got back from the dentist. And of course, anytime you go to the dentist, you're insecure because they're like occlusal on this and buckle. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Right? Like my my face went red with embarrassment like I have bad teeth what are you saying but if you're often humiliated if you're bullied as a child I was bullied because I had really really buck teeth and he even asked he's like uh tooth number five missing and then after he goes well you've had a lot of dental work huh I and mean, you can see all the crowns and stuff that I have here and I <laughs> Hi, Armando. I was bullied a lot as a child. I remember my best friend's older brother. She had four older brothers and she was the youngest, so she got whatever she wanted. I did not grow up in a family where I got whatever I wanted and I had really buck teeth and she was one of my only friends growing up. And so when I'd go play at her house, her brother would draw pictures of beavers and horses and rabbits and write my name, Sarah, in all caps with an arrow pointing to the big, huge teeth and slide it under the door while we were playing. And I was so humiliated. I was so embarrassed, but I pretended like I wasn't. I pretended like it didn't bother me. And then I would just go home and be alone <laughs> in my room and just cry. Just like, I hated it because my best friend was beautiful, outspoken. She was a singer, she was an actress, she was in drama. And I was a shy, introverted, quiet little kid. Sometimes that's childhood trauma. It can also be screamed at often or having to meet these expectations. I was held to really high standards. I was expected to get 4.0s in straight A's and I did, you know, and school came easy to me and I liked it, right? It felt like an, a sense of accomplishment and achievement, but I just felt like this air of negativity and heaviness in the house. A lot of things weren't talked about and it just felt like, you know, we just kind of went through a day. We didn't talk about feelings. We just were expected to get good grades and any mistake that we made, we were screamed at, right? Because ex perfection was expected. That is a result of childhood trauma. When you can't figure it out and you feel like your life is uh, today could be because you were expected to be perfect as a child or held to really, really high standards. And maybe you met and you achieved those standards, but still impacting and influencing you today if your parents focused on really really high achievements or if you were reprimanded for making mistakes if there was no room for you to make mistakes and and say hey it's okay that's how we learn that's how we grow like what was confusing about that to you let me help you understand even further if it was like the teacher's job to teach you and parents weren't there to support you when you were doing homework when you got home that leads to adult problems because of this childhood feeling of like you have no one to turn to no one to go to and now you turn to or go to a, an abusive person a bad relationship a toxic relationship a narcissist and you're feeling like or you know what another thing is if you were the one like that that client that i told you about she was one of five children well 
there's only one mom and there's five kids. One mom has two hands. I only have one kid and I know there are times where I wish I could grow more arms. And I used to joke that when you give birth, you should not only give birth to a child, but to another set of arms and hands because you need it. So as a parent who has five kids or even three kids, you know, well-to-do, loving parent, they can't do it all. And so if you were wherever you're at in that childhood order, if you had to help out and raise and take care of the other kids, it wasn't your job, but you had to do it because you were a part of the family and it was expected. So if you were the one that was expected to or forced to, told to, made to take care of your siblings, that could cause childhood trauma because then you were forced to grow up and take on adult responsibilities way too soon, way too early. You didn't know it then, you just did it because you had to. And now it's impacting you today. Or if you were moving often, like I said, that client whose father was in the military and worked his way up the career to be able to benefit the family, right? But she moved a lot and just had to fit in and had to make new friends and couldn't really ever get close to people growing up and was jealous and envious of all the people whose were in the cities that she would move to, they all were like in little cliques and groups and they all knew each other and they got along. She never felt like she really fit in. I mean, she was accepted into the group, but never really fit into that group. That is childhood drama. Um, your parent picking you up late all the time, believe it or not, because your mind starts to develop a belief, you don't care about me. If mom and dad, I remember this too. I used to play soccer growing up and I started hating soccer and resenting sports altogether because they never came to my practices. And you know, they came to games every now and then my dad would, but mom, not so much. And she, now we've had conversation about it as an adult and she said, I didn't know it mattered to you. And in my head, I'm thinking, are you effing kidding me? Of course it mattered to me. You being there like all the other parents and bringing your umbrella and Capri Suns and orange slices, I would have felt like you loved me, but you didn't. And so I didn't feel like you loved me. You didn't care. You would show up late and be like, hey, you ready? And I'd be one of the last kids waiting at practice or after a game to like for my parents to show up to go home. Um, parents comparing you to other people, whether it's siblings or other people, per se, on that soccer team. You know, well, so-and-so plays forward and she's always scores the goal. Why are you like defender? And I did like defender because... It's kind of the laziest position. I didn't really have to do much, but I could still be involved because I didn't have very much confidence or self-worth. So I liked Defender. I got to just sit back and chill, right? But still be a part of the team. So parents comparing you to others. I remember my dad telling me, hey, Sarah, you know, you're good. You're fast. You could get up there and you could play forward and you could start to score. And in my head, I'm like, no, no. But I would just go, okay, mm-hmm. Well, coach thinks I'm a good defender. So it's parents comparing you to others. That is childhood trauma and it impacts you as an adult today because those internal thoughts are going on, but you're not gonna express them and be like, oh yeah, let me throw me in forward. Yeah, put me in the spotlight. No, I hated being in the spotlight. So parents dismissing your emotions, even if in that moment, I didn't, but in that moment, if I had said, you know, dad, I just really don't, I just don't think I'm that good. And they go, oh, come on, right? Instead of saying, what is it that makes you feel like you're not that good? Well, let's practice more. Let me help you, right? You're not going to just be good overnight, but let me start to help you more. Or maybe let's let's find what it is you really do feel like you're good at so that you can thrive and excel and build that confidence. I didn't have any of that. And I imagine you didn't have a lot of that either. So we all experience traumatic events in our childhood. And it is something as simple as these things that are seemingly insignificant. When you're a kid, it's just the way it is, right? And now as an adult, you're probably saying the same phrase, it is what it is. But it becomes traumatic when you don't have anyone to be there for you, hold space for you, understand you, support you, or protect you from those events happening. Because then you start to turn it around and turn it inward and believe there's something wrong with you. And that's the same belief that you have as an adult today. And it's not the event, it's the belief and that there's these unhealthy attachments that get formed, right? So there's 
we've talked about this before, the anxious attachment, the avoidant attachment, the anxious avoidant, and then the secure attachment. If you are not modeled or taught or shown how to hold space for yourself and then how to really navigate through that, you're just really taught to avoid it or get really, really anxious about it. And that is developed in childhood and it doesn't magically go away. You can fake it till you make it, but you probably don't feel like you've ever made it because you probably still like you're feel like you're still faking it. That's called imposter syndrome. That's feeling like you're a fraud and you're wearing your own mask. And the narcissist is wearing a mask too, because they're also trying to hide and cover their insecurities, their feelings of not feeling good enough. So it's no wonder magnetically attracted to each other because you have the same inner childhood wounds. The difference between you and a narcissist are that you probably realize it and don't want to feel like this and are willing or ready to do the inner work to not be like that. Narcissists will deny and defend. No, no, no. It's you. It's everyone else. They're always going to play the victim and say, it's you that has the problem. You're the one that's crazy. You're the one that needs counseling, psychology, therapy, pills, whatever it is. But both of them come from a place of childhood trauma and it is not always like the big T traumas, the big abusive things that happen. So you may be thinking, I don't know why I'm like this. Like I had a good childhood, nothing happened to me, but those are traumatic childhood events that leave you still feeling like you're messed up today until you take a look in the mirror and go, you know what? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I do feel like that today. And I don't want to feel like that today because it's keeping me from waking up motivated, waking up happy, waking up feeling energized and focused on my goals, my dreams, my aspirations, moving towards becoming a better version of myself for myself, for my kids, for the, my overall well being and happiness and peace in life. So yeah, that's why you're messed up today. Welcome to the club. We all are and it's not that I'm better than you. I'm absolutely not but I'm sharing with you my experience and the way that I work with people to process and heal and move forward from this is using your mind. Your mind knows exactly what has you feeling like this, exactly what you went through, and what you experienced that's causing these feelings today. So we do that through hypnosis and through rapid transformational therapy to really get in there and give you that change that you're looking for in life so that you can move forward and not be stuck anymore thinking, ah, what's wrong with me and trying to figure it out on your own because good luck. I mean, I imagine you have, right? I imagine that's part of the problem are these ruminating thoughts, these negative thoughts that never ever seem to go away and the anxiety and the problems that they may be causing physically today in your life as well. So that's what's wrong with you. Just in case you were wondering, <laughs> just kidding. The only thing wrong with you is that you think there's something wrong with you. There's absolutely not. You are enough. You're more than enough. You always have been and always will be. And I say that all the time because it is the truth. But if you don't feel like that, if you feel like, yeah, Ha uh ha, -huh. nice Sarah, you're just, you're cute. Then let's get you out of that space so that you actually can believe it, take it on and own it as your own and it becomes who you are. So that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> and if you're ready to not feel that anything is wrong with you, then let's talk. You can always click on the link in the banner and you can schedule a time to talk about working one-on-one. -on -one. But other than that, have a wonderful day.